Hi there, welcome back to Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and we're going to work some stoichiometry practice problems today. Stoichiometry is one of those very uh, fundamental concepts in chemistry, the concept of the mole, and so it's always good to work a few practice problems. So we're going to go ahead and go through these. If you learn something, if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you would, and uh, subscribe to my channel so you can see some more uh, chemistry tutorials and demonstrations. So here's the first one. We're going to start with some easy questions that are just straight mole ratio questions, and then we'll work our way up to some more uh, advanced problems. So the first question we have, how many moles of ammonia, NH3 is ammonia, are produced when 0 0.60 moles of nitrogen react with hydrogen gas according to this equation? So simply stated, we're just starting with 0 0.60 moles of nitrogen. And the question is, how many moles of ammonia? Well, hopefully you can see that this is a 1 to 2 ratio. So however many moles of nitrogen you have, well, you're going to have twice that many moles of ammonia produced. So 0 0.6 times 2 is just 1.20 moles. That's really all you have to do for that problem. Let's move on to number two here. Here we have propane burning in oxygen with that equation. And this time it says we're starting with 3.60 moles of propane. And the question is asking how many moles of water are being formed? So once again, how many moles of water? Well, if we look at the propane to water ratio, it's one to four. So however many moles of propane we have, C3H8, we're going to have four times that many moles of water. So 3.6 times 4 is just 14.4 moles of water. So that's, that's basically all you have to do here if you have a straight mole-to-mole -mole question. Number three, we have how many moles of oxygen are required to produce 7.24 moles of carbon dioxide. So once again, we have the 7.24 moles of carbon dioxide. And the question is, how many moles of oxygen? Well, this time we can see it's a three to five ratio. So basically what that means is, however many moles of carbon dioxide we have, we're gonna have five thirds times that moles of oxygen. So we just take 7.24 and 7.24 moles and essentially multiply that by five-thirds. When we do that, we should get an answer of about 12.1. So that's why the answer is 12.1 moles of oxygen gas, O2. We'll move on and do one more like this, and then we'll do one that's, we'll do some that are a bit more advanced. We're going to take carbon monoxide and convert it to carbon dioxide with this reaction. And if we start out with 6.89 moles of carbon monoxide, how many moles of carbon dioxide can we form? Well, if you take a look at this, it is a 2 to 2 ratio. The, the mole values are actually even, aren't they? They're equal, which means however many moles of carbon monoxide we have, we're going to have the same number of moles of carbon dioxide. So we're just going to do this. It is exactly the same. It's 6.89 moles of carbon dioxide. Let's move on to some problems that are a bit more advanced. This time, we're going to start with 35.0 grams of carbon monoxide. And the question is, how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed. Now, this is not a straight mole-to-mole -mole problem, is it? We have to convert this number of grams of carbon monoxide to moles first, and then do the mole ratio. I strongly recommend that when you have something that's not a straight mole-to-mole -mole problem like this, that you go ahead and write out the steps. Don't try to take too many shortcuts here. So we'll start with 35.0 grams of CO, and we're going to convert it to moles which means we have to put grams on the bottom down here and one mole on top. And, and if we look at the periodic table, we can see that there are about 28.01 grams in one mole of carbon monoxide. And now we're ready to do the mole ratio. So carbon monoxide on the bottom, carbon dioxide on the top, and that's a two to two ratio. So we can cancel carbon monoxide out 
And if you want, you can cancel out those twos as well. When you do that division and the math here, you'll find that the answer is about 1.25 moles of carbon dioxide, okay? Always uh, have the right number of significant figures if you can and express the right uh, units as well. Let's move on to number six here. We're gonna have a different equation. We're gonna make some ammonia once again. This time it says we're gonna take 75.0 liters of hydrogen gas at STP and we're gonna react it with a bunch of nitrogen here, excess nitrogen. How many moles of ammonia are formed? Well, this is the same type of thing. We have to start with the 75.0 liters of hydrogen and we have to convert that to moles. So our very first step is convert to moles. So that means uh, liters on the bottom, one mole on top. And hopefully, from the section on moles, you remember that there are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at STP. It's because it says we're at STP here, and this is a gas. So we're gonna cancel liters, top and bottom, and now we can do the mole ratio. So that means we put H2 on the bottom, so that will cancel. And the question is how many moles of ammonia? So NH3 has to go on top, and it's two to three, based upon the coefficients of the balanced equation here. Two ammonia for every three hydrogen moles. So hydrogen's out, and now in our calculator, we can take 75.0, divide by 22.4, times two, divided by three, and the answer that we get should be about 2.23 moles of ammonia. So hopefully you got that as your answer whenever you keyed that into your calculator. Let's try another one. This time we're going to have the same uh, reaction, but this time we're going to start with 25 liters of nitrogen and we're going to react it with excess, that should say excess hydrogen. And we'll just correct that here because Otherwise, the question doesn't make any sense. How many grams of ammonia are formed? So how many grams of ammonia? Well, once again, we're going to start with 25 liters of nitrogen. And once again, that very first step is convert to moles. So we have to convert to moles by putting liters on the bottom, one mole on top. And hopefully we all remember that there are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at STP. So liters are out. Now we can do the mole ratio. The question's asking about NH3, so NH3 goes on the top, ammonia, nitrogen on the bottom, so that will cancel with this over here. We have two ammonia molecules or moles for every one, there's nothing here, so there's understood to be a one there, one nitrogen, so we can cancel our nitrogen top and bottom. Now this is not all, because this time the question says how many grams of ammonia. So we have to go one step further. We can't leave this in moles. We have to do a third step, which is convert to our final unit, which in this case is grams. So I have to put grams on top, one mole on bottom. And if we look at the periodic table, there are about 17.03 grams in one mole of ammonia. So moles are out top and bottom. And when we do the math here, we take 25.0 divided by 22.4 times 2 times 17.03, the answer I get is about 38.0, and that's grams of ammonia. So hopefully that's what you got as well. Let's move on to number eight. In the next question, we have a different reaction, and this time we're starting, we're starting with ammonia. We're starting with 17.3 grams of NH3 ammonia and we're going to react that with some excess nitrogen monoxide gas. The question is how many grams of water? Okay, so once again, this is kind of like we had before. We're going to have to do all three steps. We have to convert to moles as step one. Then second of all, do the mole ratio. And finally, we have to convert to our final unit, which is going to be grams of water. So we start with what's given to us, the 17.3 grams of NH3. Now we have to convert to moles. So that means one mole on top, and we have to put our grams on the bottom. And like we said in the last problem, there are 17.03 grams in one mole of ammonia. Now we can do the mole ratio. 
So ammonia is what we've started with, so that's what has to go on the bottom. The question is asking about how much water, so water goes on top. So that's what we have as an answer. And the ratio here is six waters for every four ammonia molecules. So it's six to four. We can cancel our ammonia top and bottom. Now we're in moles of water. The question is how many grams of water. So we have this one last step to do. So grams on top, one mole on bottom. And since we're talking about water, that's about 18.02 grams in a mole of that. So we cancel moles top and bottom. And when we do our math, we take the 17.3, divide by 17.03, times 6, divide by 4, times 18.02. The answer I get is about 27.5, and that's grams of water. So hopefully you got that as well. Let's try number 9. This time we're going to take the same reaction, but this time we're starting with 55.5 liters of ammonia gas at STP, and we're going to react it with excess NO. And the question is, how many grams of N2 are we producing? So the same idea. We have to go through all three steps, you know, convert to moles, mole ratio, and then convert to our final unit, which is grams this time. So we start with 55.5 liters of NH3. Now we do the first step, convert to moles. So one mole on top, liters on bottom, and in number of liters in a mole of gas is 22.4. We hopefully will remember that. Liters are out. Now we can do the mole ratio. So we need to have NH3, since it's, we're starting with that over here, it goes on the bottom. That way it'll cancel out. And since the question is asking about how many grams of N2, well, N2 is what goes on top. And once again, remember that our uh, mole ratio comes from the coefficients of the balanced equation. So we have 5N2 for every 4 ammonia. And so ammonia can cancel top and bottom. Now we have to convert to grams. The question is how many grams of, of nitrogen? We're in moles of nitrogen. So we have to convert to grams. So grams on top, 1 mole on bottom. And if we look at the periodic table, we see that the number of grams in one mole of N2 is about 28.01. So we can cancel moles top and bottom, and we can do our math. If we take 55.5 divided by 22.4 times 5 divided by 4 times 28.01, the answer we get is about 86.8 grams of, of nitrogen. Okay, so that is our answer for this problem. Let's do one more, then we'll stop for this, for this video here. We'll take a look at the last problem here. We're going to use the same reaction. This time we're starting with 10.0 liters of ammonia. And the question is, how many liters of N2 gas are produced? Okay, so once again, we start with 10.0 liters. Of ammonia. And let's go ahead and do our first step, which is convert to moles. So liters have to go on the bottom and one mole on top. And there are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at STP. So liters are out. Now we can do our mole ratio. So since we're starting with NH3, NH3 goes on the bottom. And since we're trying to convert to liters of N2 gas, well, N2 have to go on the top. And of course, our mole ratio comes straight out of the coefficients of the balanced equation. So we have 5N2 to every 4NH3, like this. So ammonia is out, top and bottom. And now we can convert to our final unit, which is liters, just like it says in the problem. So I need to put liters on top, one mole on the bottom, and that's 22.4 liters. Now, we can cancel moles, but one other item you might notice is that we can also cancel liters, can't we? We can cancel the 22.4 on top and on bottom. The 22.4 goes out. This actually shows us that if you ever have a problem where it's just liters to liters, you can technically skip the converting to moles and then converting back to liters because uh, the number of liters in a mole of gas will be the same 
for both of those gases as long as you're at the same temperature and pressure as, as we are in this problem. So if we take the, the numbers here and, and multiply and divide the 10 times 5 divided by 4, we get an answer of about 12.5 liters of nitrogen in 2. I hope you learned something from this video. I, I hope you're able to practice your stoichiometry skills and uh, learn about moles a little bit more and work with balanced equations. If you learned something, please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching chemistry for over two decades and I hope uh, you learned something from the video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.